What's good, everybody? Welcome to the Pull Up and Chat. My name is BJ Matthews, aka B Jizzle. Before we get started, follow us on the YouTube page, the Pull Up Basketball Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, the Pull Up Basketball Podcast. You know what I mean? Instagram at B Jizzle, B J I Z Z L L E. Follow my co host, Rick Masters, at Rick Masters23. You know what I mean? Instagram at underscore the Pull Up underscore. TikTok, Twitter, the Pull Up Basketball Podcast. Hit that notification bell on the screen. Hit the subscribe button. Get all of our updated content. Like, share, subscribe. Let's get it popping. Oh, man. So, like I said, trade deadline is done with. It's over with. Kaput. All the team rosters are set for the rest of the season. So, no more moving around. No more speculation. Let's get it going. Um, last night was a good, a really good game. Um, I'm not talking about the Bucks and the Suns. I'm talking about the Dallas Mavericks and the LA Clippers. Uh, I watched that game into it in its entirety. Uh, the Mavs prevailed 110 to 105 against the LA Clippers. But the big the big show was Luka Doncic doing what he did, putting up 51 points against the LA Clippers. Um, I think it's time we actually make a video on Luka Doncic, the Slovenian killer, and my emphasis on how I feel like he is as a player. So let's get it going. All right, look. Luka Doncic, to me, he's a very interesting cat, interesting player, because if you guys remember, Luka Doncic, didn't, he came into the league with a lot of exposure. Um, very early, he was given the keys by the Dallas Mavericks owner, Mark Cuban. This is going to be his team. And pretty much since he's been there, it's been his team. Even when they had, you know, ex-point guard Dennis Smith Jr. on the Dallas Mavericks, um, as a guy, Luka Doncic was just, you know, they just gave him the, the franchise pretty much. Um, he came in very mature for his age. He played basketball professionally since I believe he was 16 years old. And he was playing up against the USA Olympic team back um, when he was in Slovenia playing professional basketball. So this guy is not your average 23-year-old, I believe, right now. Your average 23-year-old. Um, he's mature beyond his years. But there have been questions about his game to me. And I didn't want to be too hard on it because, you know, he's still growing. I think he's only in his fourth year um, right now. So he still has time to grow. You know, throughout the process, he was getting, you know, better and better and better. But last year really made me question a lot of things about Luka Doncic. You know, could he lead his team to a championship? And last year after what I seen between him and the Clippers, I'm like, this guy has flaws that can be exposed, and he's not going to win a championship with the style of basketball that he's playing. What I mean by that is Luka Doncic is a very ball-dominant guy who needs to dribble, dribble, dribble to get in some type of rhythm. He doesn't like playing off the ball. He doesn't really like to play defense. And when, like I said yesterday, when you play a good guy up against a guy who's a two-way player like a Kawhi Leonard, I would choose that guy over the guy who's a one-way player who can pass every single time and you guys saw what happened the Clippers won in seven games last season um led by Kawhi Leonard so Luka Doncic to me over this past summer was going to have to make some changes to his game and I believe that he has grown from the last couple of seasons against the Clippers in the playoffs and the addition to Jason Kidd to that team as the head coach, I believe, is the biggest reason. I had questions about could Jason Kidd and Luka Doncic coexist because the reports have been Luka Doncic and Rick Carlisle did not get along, and they didn't really see eye to eye on a lot of things. But I was just I was questioning would Luka Doncic be able to listen to a Jason Kidd because to me Luka he has pretty much been giving the rights and the privileges of a star player no matter where he's at. So a guy like that, usually nine times out of ten, is not going to listen to so many people. But, of course, Jason Kidd is a Hall of Famer, one of the top. Used to be, you could argue, top five, five point guards of all time. So if you can't listen to him, who else could you listen to? Um, I've seen changes in Luka's game. Um, he plays more off with the ball. He's not so ball dominant. He knows how to control and pace himself. Um, uses teammates. Um, the Mavs, as a team, look better than they did last year it was sharing the ball and playing defense that's been the biggest key playing defense and building guys around Luka Doncic that can you know support him 
in his his style of play by playing defense. Guys like Powell, their big man, Max Kleber is taking a jump. Um, Collison, their point guard. You know, they have guys on that team that can really support um, Luka Doncic. Now, I want to say this because I want to get this very, very clear. For some reason, people compare Luka Doncic to LeBron James and Larry Bird, which I don't feel like I see that in Luka at whatsoever. The guy who I've always compared Luka Doncic to is James Harden. If you guys watch how Luka plays, he plays just like James Harden did in Houston. High usage player, gets up a lot of shots, needs the ball dribbling to get a rhythm, not a great defender, um, body type is pretty similar. I just never seen him being a LeBron James or a Larry Bird. But also, I will say this, and Luka has to also change this about his game. What I've noticed, he's a very good front runner. He's a very good starter, but not a very good finisher. He gets his rhythm early on in the game. But when it gets to the end of the game where it gets tight and he's going up against somebody who is just as good or better than him, who's actually a closer like a Kawhi Leonard, it's not going to be good for him because in those in those playoff games, that's where it's determined at the end of the game, not the beginning. They're going to be tight games much of the playoffs. So if you can't finish, then you're going to most likely lose those series. So Luka Doncic has to do a better job of finishing games. His defense has gotten better, um, but it can be more better. And I think with Jason Kidd being there, he's going to hold himself accountable to get better. And the growth is going to become more and more and more. So what do I expect by the Dallas Mavericks? I don't think they're going to win a championship with the roster they have or not even make it to the conference finals. But I do see the difference from last year about this team. And I think people need to really take them seriously. I feel like they have grown from their playoff uh, experiences. Um, I think they will make it past the first round this season, whoever faces them. And, um, yeah, Luka Doncic, to me, he 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 can be the face of the league, but he's going to have to iron off a few kinks. He's going to have to iron off the, the fact that he's not a great defender. He's going to have to continuously start knowing how to play off the ball, and he's going to have to learn how to finish games more than just always be a front runner. Um, those are my opinions, you know what I'm saying? Um, let me know what y'all think in the comments. Do y'all think Luka Doncic could be the face of the league? Do y'all think Luka Doncic could be the best player in the league? Do y'all feel like the Dallas Mavericks are a legit threat for an NBA championship? Let me know what you think in the comments, you know what I mean? Pull up a seat, pull up a chair, pull up. Peace. Out of here like swim well.